Um, for some reason, we decided to scare an entire village, kidnap someone, go into a giant's cave to find a kid that we were looking for about nine months ago. Uh, eventually found the kid, you know, it, it's better late than never. Um, and now we're trying to figure out what to do in this situation, because I have no idea what to about to do. Hmm. Stupid question, but since I can detect evil at will, essentially, um, can I uh, try and determine the mayor's alignment on our way uh, to the cave? I always forget I can do that. The mayor's, you said? Yeah, the guy we brought with us. Mayor. Mayor. Okay, yeah, uh, Hallis Autumn Gazer, um, he is evil. Or at least one of his alignments is evil. You would have detected that on your way here. I guess as a side note, like Jemagog is not evil, um, but some of these giants probably are, or at least in a like a weird sense to the term. Like their public reputation is certainly an evil one. People assume giants are just, you know, out to kill and devour everything in their path. Well, there's no law against being evil, but once we find somebody who is doing shady shit, knowing that they're evil is a motive. Hmm. Right. Um, now, I was going to mention that last time you said that you would be interested in trying to extract Walter from this situation. And um, Walter seems like he wants to leave, more or less. But he also knows that he would be punished if he tried. And um, <clears throat> the uh, There were some alternatives that Jemagog had presented to you when he sort of used his magic to place himself in a normal time frame. Um, did they threaten Walter? No. They just, like, I mean, threaten as in, they told him that he's going to stay here, and that, you know, if he tries to leave, they will find him and bring him back. Uh, and he'll face some sort of a punishment in line with his offense. So, like, you know, maybe he'll be crowded for a week or something. Um, Gemma Gog had offered some alternative solutions to you guys, among them being that uh, they're not, they don't really care like what kids that they have. Obviously, they have a, you know, um, friendly attachment to some, but it's um, <clears throat> basically they're happy as long as they have children to steal the age from. So you guys had a means to providing that. Um, Actually, yeah. we do have like one child we could provide. There was a child who was currently living with Sansubo, um, the child that we rescued from the Phrenic Sages. He was an orphan, so he doesn't really have anything in the way of attachments. We okay. could bring him okay. here, I guess. So before we just uproot another kid, um, I have two questions. Um, are we actually going to discuss this? To me, it sounded at the end of the last session. We were just about to just take the kid out and fight if we had to. Um, but if we're actually discussing this, wouldn't it be better to just... They're fine with bringing the parents in, right? I mean, they don't get a yeah, benefit, they're... but they're not hiding. Like, right. If she doesn't trust the, the town, I mean, we don't even know if she'd be fine with just staying here and, or the other parents, right? Like, the only reason they've been kidnapping children is because they've been keeping this a secret. I mean, this place is safe. There might be people that just want to live here. Hmm. You're not going to find a better, like, protection than a bunch of giants on a huge cliff with a secret door, right? I mean, right. it's a pretty sick place. I mean, you, you never did get a chance to talk to the um, um, Ida Duncalling. Um, yeah, no, we can look for her first. Like, this kid's not going anywhere. We can always try and locate her and get her back. Like, see what she wants to do. Like, we can, we, we don't have to take the kid, then look for the parents. It's not like we're going to take this child with us going forward, right? So we're going to need to find either if we want to rescue her, right? I mean, you don't have to go this one direction. 
don't know, just wipe off. That is a good point. If we rescue the kid, we don't really have anywhere to take him at the moment. Levin, why is your mic open? Well, we take him back to our home. What kind of back to our village, presumably, where Sir Berard can keep watch over him. So you want to fly all the way back south, drop the kid there as an orphan, then fly all the way up north again. We I don't necessarily need to fly. I don't care about the transportation aspect, but at this point, what are we rescuing him from and to? Like, if he's perfectly fine here, until we find Ida, there's really not much to do about it. Like, if she's dead, then unfortunately he doesn't have any other family. We might be shit out of luck. So we should try to find Ida then, right? The last thing we note, I might be wrong, the last correct note we found in the journal was, it wasn't the cemetery, right? That was the fake note. Was it, right? It, it was the fake note. So where was the last note that she was investigating? I know it said that she didn't trust the mayor, but I forget where it said she was going. Right. So <clears throat> it sounded like she you know, was checking some of the, the nearby areas, right? So she had checked the area where Walter disappeared. She had um, tried to investigate like some of the other things like the junkyard around and uh, like the village of Peeringham to the north and a few other places. But um, the Barrows was not, uh, was the one that was forged, you believe, like a forgery. So, I mean, we just have to check those areas for something then. I mean, I guess that's an option, right? It'd just be a bit brute force in the method. Did I try scrying for her? As the spell scrying. Hmm. Um, you can try that. Sure. It'd probably be easier if Walter had like any sort of possession of hers that he keeps with him. Or even better, like lock of hair. Right. Well, he doesn't necessarily have the uh, anything from her, but um, having I him. I could also uh, ask Sir Berard to look at her home and see if he can find anything. Okay. I believe I put Sir Berard as one of my trumps for my trump deck, so I can either speak to him or teleport to him. Or both. Okay. If you can so, teleport to him, how many people can you take with you? I don't know. I think it's as teleport, which I think means everyone. At ninth level, it'd only be three other people. Okay. Assuming it's the same as 3.5. The only person I would need to teleport would be the kid, but and then I just print. Yes. I can bring myself back since I have another spell called Evacuation Rune, which I can basically use to leave a rune somewhere and then teleport back to that rune. That is awesome. Yep. So what do you mean? Uh, that's what was it that you wanted to contact him for? I want to contact Sir Berard and see if he could maybe like find like a lock of her hair or like a body part. Well, I probably not a body part. But the lock of her hair, a bit of her nail or anything, where she used to live. Hmm. It'll make the scrying a lot easier. Since it'll give her like a minus 10 of the will save. I'm not sure if right. it's necessary. It probably isn't necessary. I'm just. I mean, do you want to try first? It's not like we're in a rush right now, right? Also, um, scrying takes one hour. Scrying yeah, is a cast of one hour. I'm not going to rush. I mean, we, we left in, in the morning, I think. Yeah, we left in the morning. So this is probably what? Uh, Afternoon to evening right now? Good yeah. <clears throat> Just well, what's the... Exit, what you can do. Hmm. So the consensus is you do want to do the scrying there? Or... I mean, sure. I'll do the scrying. Okay. I need to make a will save, I guess, if she wishes to not be scried on, or she could choose to fail the save automatically. Hmm. 
which I would hope that she does. Yeah, I don't think... I mean, she would have no idea what the source of the scrying was, right? And she wouldn't really know. So, if she's conscious, like, by default, she would resist. But, what's your DC on that? The base DC is 19, modified by any things that modify scrying. So, body part, lock affair, bit of nail, possession, garment, likeness, picture, etc. Okay. Is anything that makes it that you would get a bonus to from, or is it just a flat will save? Well, I think there would probably be a bonus, like okay. having Walter here, you know, having her son here to help you with the scrying certainly would, would I help. guess he counts as a body part, right? He came out of her, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> let's, let's not get into that discussion. Let's yeah, not that, that, exactly, but it, thematically, I, I agree that there's, he has a special connection to her that should be reflected there, so um, she didn't roll very high for her save, so she would fail here, and she has no special protections on her or anything to prevent scrying. Um, so your scrying gives you a visual representation, like you can see her through the, the yeah, scrying Yeah, you can observe this creature at any distance. Okay. So, see her, so, I can see and hear the subject and its surroundings, approximately 10 feet in all directions. Okay. And if the subject yeah. moves, the sensor follows up right. to 150 feet. So you, um, as you are watching here, you, um, can see that it appears that, uh, um, Ida and Ristine are walking through, um, an area of kind of like dark or shrouded hills. Um, there's a thick mist in the air, which makes vision difficult, but through the patches of mist, you occasionally will see, um, the two of them walking to the northwest. Um... From that, you can give me a perception check for anyone that can gaze through this pool. Can I do that? Um, it, you are literally like illuminating a pool of water, right? So others can see it? Yeah, I guess that is how scoring works, yeah. Okay. Then yeah, anybody can make this check. Um, you could also do a sense motive if you want. I have to open up the character sheet. So you said you wanted a perception check and a sense motor check, right? Yeah. Yeah, so perception. Uh, sense motor. Sense perception. Right. Let's see. Perception. Plus two if the motive is good. Okay. Yeah, this is ruled by bluff, so I don't like that. Hmm. Okay. I don't think she's within my range for blind sight, since obviously she's clearly not here. I, I don't think my spell applies. But, but yeah, that's well, the bonus of the spell. As I, I separated the does conventional senses, right? It doesn't do uh, special senses, is my... That's it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, um... Let's see, let's get this. Okay, so... <clears throat> Okay, so you are um, trying to get a sense for what is going on at her specific location. And as you are viewing that, um, you guys will notice a few minor things. So for one, she and Racine have kind of like a blank look on their face. Um, like, you know, they're walking through kind of what appears to be a, a pretty spooky area, but um, there's no fear there. Um, nor is there kind of the rugged determination that you've known from Ida. Um, it's just sort of like a blank, kind of like wide-eyed stare as they're both constantly looking to the northwest and moving in that direction. <clears throat> you guys would recognize that this is um, consistent with some sort of a fascination or enthralling-like effect. Essentially, they're under some sort of charm. Um, in addition, <clears throat> it appears that their <clears throat> feet are bound in some way so that while they are trying to move in the northwest, 
So something is restricting their movement or keeping them more or less located in the same general area. I can't remember. Does Scline tell us their location or does it just show the area? Like, do we know where this is? So you might not know exactly where this is, but you probably have a- I can see it here, the place. Um, perhaps if you were familiar with the area, like uh, strong knowledge, knowledge local, okay. local, okay. right? Knowledge geography, yes. So, Leonidas um, is from the west originally, so he's really knowledge local here, but for an area in the north. Northern, or he doesn't This is his north originally. Yes. Okay. Okay, then yeah, so that will apply. So basically, as he's considering um, the different possibilities, um, he sees signs that indicate that, uh, like, those kind of rolling hills um, look similar to the Hobbit hills. That you guys had seen before, or excuse me, halfling hills, and um, you get the um, the definitive impression that uh, this is not an area where people live, but rather where they go to die. This is the Barrow Fields. Is there a reason why people go to die there? Well, they're buried there. Is perhaps a more accurate. Um, that's not good. Uh, should we go? Okay, let's go. How far away is this? Can we just teleport uh, there? Can nah, we? I can only teleport to places I have in my trump deck. And also places I've marked with an evacuation route. So theoretically, I can leave our evacuation route here, but I actually don't think it could even affect other people besides me for evacuation route. Except okay. as that. Um, how far away is it? Um, it's a few hundred miles. I think you guys could probably reach it by, like, tonight, if you left now. Um, <coughs> so, you said there's, she's fascinating, she's moving in a set area. Um, it doesn't look like there's any immediate danger, or, like, they're following someone specifically or anything like that? Not see that, no. Um, okay. but they are consistently moving to the north and the west. They're still moving, but, like, their feet are bound, so it's hard for them to move. Yeah, like one of their feet is bound. So, like, what you notice is that even though the fog makes it difficult to like obscure, your senses are sharp enough that you will be able to see that indeed they have um they're able to move. Um, their feet just like dragging that whatever restraint is, but um enough to make it like you know look like they're moving when you know they're being pulled back constantly to prevent any real progress. When you say there's a 5% on... chance per caster level that detect magic works through scrying. So if anybody else wants to roll for detect magic, by all means, it'll be 5 times cast level percent chance, so like 45, I think, at this level. Sure, I can roll detect magic. Nope. I want it to be greater than 55? Can it be the other way? Or... I mean, I, it's no, I see. So, so I wouldn't cheat. I mean, you could do like 20 to what, 65? Okay, well, it doesn't look like you guys succeeded on the detect magic effect, necessarily. 
No. Okay. But that's fine. Um, yeah. The uh I mean you guys had heard a rumor about this before, which I think you're it was recent enough that your characters would remember. You'd heard that some of the pollution from the nearby junkyard had crossed the river and come this way. Pollution. Um yeah, the pollution wouldn't be near the barrows, but did we any, hear any rumor that the pollution itself necessarily could do this? As far as we know right now, it's just, you know, mundane pollution. Right. You don't really know or understand <clears throat> what's okay. going on at the junkyard. But, you know, you'd surmise that, like, any normal pollution would not have this effect on people, but... Yeah, it, it's always a possibility. Okay. Um... Okay, I mean, it's about time for Walter's head time anyway, right? Do we just want to head out? Well, so you're going to leave Walter here as you guys head out? I don't think hey. it's a good idea to bring him there. And uh, Do you guys want to? I mean, I, I, I assume you just weren't, but it's up to you guys. Yeah, we should leave Walter here. We can't really take him with us, otherwise the giants are gonna get pissed. He just, I think he's safer here, just overall for right now. But yeah, I do think that the mother needs to be able to decide, at the very least, know where he is. And then, once given all the information, she can decide what happens to him. And if need be, we can sort of replace him, I guess, with the kid from that we saved from the next ages. I mean, we can cross that bridge if we get to it. I know, that's if need be. We'll see what happens. If the mother, like, finds that he's perfectly fine here and she wants him to stay here, then that's perfectly fine. If not, then we'll replace him, I guess. Okay. Okay. So you guys, um, having resolved that, are going to leave. Um, <clears throat> Jemagog will escort you out, and um, just kind of at the last minute, as he is seeing you off at the door, you see the magic spell that he had cast on himself fades, and um, he reverts to uh, the reverse flow of time. He's quite surprised to see you standing at the door, and he raises his club as if to attack. Uh, we will wave and leave. <laughs> All right. Something tells me you don't want to talk to a giant with a club in the air. Definitely, yeah. You can figure it out on its own. That's fine. As a side question, just out of pure curiosity, um, was the mayor's daughter in there as well, or did she actually? perish out of unrelated circumstances? I think she would have perished out of unrelated circumstances. That's a good question. I didn't place her in there specifically. <clears throat> well, just curious. So, let's do this. So Enoch, you've been silent. No, wait, who's the one that? Yeah. I'm still kind of like Enoch. I just slipped my finger off, so I'm kind of drowsy on day meds right now. Ah. So. Did you cut through the bone? I cut to the bone, and I cut the tip of the bone off. Oh. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> yes. Just the hazards of trade. Did they sew it back on? Uh, no, because my chef didn't think it was a smart idea to put it on ice and bring it. Jesus. <laughs> People were a little panicky at work and forgot it, so. Yeah, well, there probably was a lot of blood cutting your finger off. If it's yeah. a hazard of work, why would they panic? You make it sound like it was supposed to happen regularly. So, <laughs> sounds like it's not a regular thing. It's not, but it is a possible hazard at work, like from a chef knife. 
Well, it's also possible to lose your finger in a car door, but it doesn't happen very often. Um, I have some more questions. Are you guys going to bring Hallis with you? Um, I don't think here. we have any specific use for Hallis. Like, we can obviously bring him back with us. Why is everything dark? Sorry, I'm moving your tokens around so I can copy them over. Oh, okay. I mean, he can stay here, right? It's safe. It's got shelter. I don't really want to dirty Yellow Sanger with the the skin of a of a cultist, so it's fine if he stays here, right, guys? You don't need him. Well, me. does the giant think that's okay? Like he's all fucked up again, isn't he? He's fine. Yeah. I mean, he sort of understands what's happening, but also not like he had known. Look, he's been making a deal with these giants for a long time. He needs to, if he, if he doesn't know how to deal with it, that's his own dang problem. Things could have been a lot easier if he was open to this evil from the beginning. He needs to accept some responsibility. For his own we could just cut him loose and cut his tongue so he can't talk. I mean, we could do that. We could also have this conversation uh, publicly in front of him. Honestly, I assume you are. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm. I'm not hiding my complete disdain for this thing. I mean, those woods. Sorry, not woods. The mist seems if they had some type of fascination effect or something. Might be a good idea to have a guinea pig. Yeah, Hollis, you're fine staying here, right? Or do you want to be the guinea pig? Hollis doesn't. Uh... Hollis wants to live. He's afraid that if he's left here, then. I'll get stomped on by the giants. If he goes with you, then you'll just terrorize him some more. I think, okay. under the circumstances, he'd prefer to get away from all of you. You crazy sociopaths. A or B. Here or there. It's probably a smart choice, Hollis. Just find a corner where they can't step on. All right. Like a dung pile. Everything's black again. We're in like the bottom flash center. I we see, see a token in the darkness. Yeah, we yes. see what you should be able to see them. Since you have scribed them before and you have a good sense of where they are. As I yeah. said, it's in the dim moonlight. Um, the, there's occasionally like a gap in the thick mist and uh, you can see them essentially on top of that hill in the barrows. Like here in the barrows. It also means that we're likely to run into whatever is keeping them from moving. I don't see anything. Well, can... I... Looks like the fog of war is on. It is. Yeah, there's probably some of that. Can well, they're in the bottom of matters. matters. Well, do we make your way up? Is this something over here? So, um, Leonidas would see one of the entrances to the barrows. This is a, mm. essentially set up like a mausoleum or a crypt. There's a giant stone door, circular, similar to the doors in the halfling homes, but this one made of stone and obviously made to last. It's covering the front of the barrow. I see. You think with some effort it could be moved? Mm. Um, do I have... Did we just leave Hollis behind? Yeah. He wanted to stay. It's he probably is Of murderous giants or crazy. So fear balance. I think we call this. Yeah. You said with a little bit of effort the thing could be moved? Yes. So Do you have a reason to go in? Um, not necessarily. I mean you can see Ida and Racine up there on the hill and um it's really up to you guys. Like I said before, they are you know, appear to be moving to the north and the west, not making any real progress. Um, it's not really clear how long they've been doing this, but uh, for a while at least. So question, um, is the color of this land due to the fog or is it due to the pollution? This seems very unnatural. So I just want to make sure this is just like their theatrical effect, but this is actually due to like the pollution. Right, you could make a knowledge check for that, um, trying to understand. 
Uh, would sorry. that be nature or religion? Um, let's see, sorry. This is. Oh, right. I didn't set the dark vision on Aradavar because he also shines bright light. So, should be able to see further now. Thank you. I'm bright like a diamond. If I do not see any obstructions, then I will move up to Ida. Okay. I do have light as a cantrip, and I have it always prepared. Yeah. I am light. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, stuff. I don't have light. No, I, I actually blaze light 24-7. So now nobody can avoid looking at the G-string. Exactly. So is this land naturally like this, or could this be So you suspect that it is not natural? That uh, it's possible that the fog here could have been created as a natural byproduct of some pollution, but um, you know the land itself looks kind of dark and bleak. You imagine that uh, it could be haunted, or you know there could be some spirits that are restless here. This is probably, you know, given that you knew that the town of Gully, which was ancient, um, this borrow is probably ancient as well, maybe going back thousands or tens of thousands of years. Okay, so that brings up our first question to the first word you said. Is there any chance this mist is poisonous? You don't believe so, although um, here or there you may notice um, that there are some spores in the air. Spores? Spores? Yes. Similar, um, like almost like fungal or fungi-like spores that are kept just floating through the mist. Uh, okay. Um, yes. Have we already inhaled them, or have we not gone through those parts yet? Well, you, like, you're not seeing large clusters of it, like you see, like, okay. you know, the odd one here or there, so, you know, if you've inhaled it, you maybe have inhaled, like, a single particle or something. Not, nothing to be worried about. Can I create, like, a rope or something like that, like a lasso, and then have, like, lean either for somebody else who's strong, just, like, lasso the girls out of there? I just go in. Do do I actually know Ida? So, in this version, I don't think you would have met Ida before. That's um, fair. I will but... call out to her as I'm approaching. All right. So, give so her, like, you... a little save. Call out to her. She doesn't appear to make any, like, take any note of your calling out. But um, <clears throat> you guys will sort of hear a voice on the wind and um, see a strange sort of distortion of the nearby land. Um, the voice says, Ah, finally, the heroes of Nantagu Forest have come. The destroyers of my beloved, for which we will finally have our revenge. We'll kill you like we did her. She does piss off. Out of here with that. At, at about that moment, um, you guys will sort of see almost like a glitch like distortion of the surrounding lands and terrains. Um, you'll hear the sounds of sort of like earth being ripped open and several of those large stones in the mounds rolling aside. As you do, I would like you guys to roll initially. Um, as we do, uh, since we're close enough, I just have one question. Are the feet of Rising and I bloodied at all from all their walking in their constant state? They or probably they are winded, like they've probably taken non-lethal damage from essentially a forced march, but not they have not been physically harmed. Oh, okay. Have they like oh. eaten anything recently? Yeah, it's unclear if they've eaten anything recently or you know what's going on there, but I just want to make sure there weren't any like immediate peril or something like that. Okay. Anthony pick a name. What? Pick a name. Your name tag's so big it covers a token on either side of you. 
good. It's a good name. It's a strong name. It's a strong name. Oh, and he immediately came to peer pressure. We... What the fuck is that snake-like thing? That snake-like thing. I'm... Third in initiative, it looks like a like glowing thing with a bunch of snakes coming out of it. Yeah, oh, I'm a Medusa. Okay. Let's not worry about the details. They don't look that bad. That's weird. Like we're friends with like the Nagas. I'm not a fan of how this. How does this actually turn it down? Okay. So that looks like it's working. So we have Dranic. We have. Ashkenor. Right over a nice Anthony. So the five players, I believe, we're all in initiative. Okay. I like how we're all close together <laughs> at the bottom. And then you have Ashkenor, <laughs> and then Dranin goes up there. So for matters, um, I've added the text hostile intent. Um, it's in my repertoire of long-term buffs. Okay. Because you know what that means. Spoiler, we've rolled initiative. There's hostile intent. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't matter at this point, but in the future. Oh, right. right. <clears throat> uh, I think I should ask to make sure I cancel it. Uh, Tomo's ability score buff is gone, right? Yeah. Sorry. We're not Tomo looking at Tomo. Well, his ability score buff is not restricted by distance, so yeah, that so won't go away until he chooses to take it away, which I don't think he would have yet. Like, really? Yeah. Yeah. He, he um, won't take it away until there's another major battle and he has to give it to his own allies or something. Okay. Is, uh, that really our... is that the inherent bonus, or is that something different? Yeah, that's the inherent bonus. So he One can take that away bonus. and just give it to someone else? Yeah. Yeah, it's he has a limited number, like he has a basically like a limited number of these he can give out, but then they last forever across any distance on the same plane. So he can just leave them on you until he wants to give it to somebody else. Oh, well, that's terrible. I think that's terrible. I've already rescinded mine since I have my stats at like a very particular number for a reason. <laughs> I will happily take mine. So, so let's. This is this one. Let's see how well this one does this. So. If you don't mind me asking, when you said the revenge part, would there have been time to bring out Yellow Singer or not? It's fine if not. I'm just curious. Um, not really. I I'm using his turn here. Yeah, that's fine for that so this is really like the second that you suspected anything was wrong i will say though that you probably have not seen like that reality changing or warping effect since the time of the shattering like, That's you, the, problem. the world around you has literally changed before your eyes can you describe uh, that change or are we just talking about the rocks moving and everything like you know in some cases there's rocks moving there's other stuff um but before we get to that, uh, was Dranic hidden as he was approaching? I see he's kind of behind everyone else here. Yeah, I mean, typically I'm not running ahead unless I'm sneaking ahead, so. Okay, so were you sneaking here, or? Uh, let's go with no, because I didn't say I was, so. Okay, that's reasonable. So a creature basically charges at you through the mist. As it attacks, um, it basically swings out with uh, its like almost like a deceased or dead hand, like far decayed, and it slams you so hard it basically breaks its own hand and down its to the elbow basically as it splatters into you. Does a thirty-five hit your AC? Yes. Okay, so that's forty points of damage. Uh, 
anything from behind us. So you guys um, hear shuffling all around you as apparently a lot of like maybe hundreds of small creatures are approaching from all signs. You realize that uh, you are probably surrounded. Basically, another creature approaches Dranic, but these things are so slow, it's basically like crawling out of the ground and just gets next to you by the time it reaches you. It doesn't charge. These are small-sized creatures. You suspect that uh, from their general appearance, they look like some kind of halfling zombies. But none of them are moving. A rather large mob of them basically pushes open one of the stone slabs. Dranik is able to see it moving through the mist as sort of like falling over each other as they're just charging um, towards all of you. Aradabra can hear others clamoring up the hills around him. All right, can Anthony give me a perception check, please? Uh, yeah. Thirty six. That's pretty good. You can roll for triple twenty chance. End the game right here, please. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you roll a triple twenty, you you end the encounter with success. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see a creature approach. Um, the creature looks to be like a collection of mist and um, those uh, spores, but um, it takes on a roughly humanoid shape, and in the mist and spores you can see the translucent outline of a crown-like pumpkin atop its head. Um, the creature kind of moves up to you and it attempts to swipe at you, but you are aware of the attack, so you are not necessarily flat-footed, although you have not yet acted in the round, so do you have um, Uncanny Dodge or similar? I do have Uncanny Dodge. Okay, so you... This will just be against your base AC, then. Okay. Yeah, oh. that, that definitely hits. Wait, that's too high. Sorry, wait a minute. Is that versus that's touch or base AC? It's supposed to be against touch, but then that's not the right number. Why is that so high? <laughs> Incorporal touch plus six. I rolled a forty-four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, the the original versions of these were only plus six, but then of course these ones are mutants, and they have had a long time to germinate. See so what happens when you don't follow up all your quests. Hey, uh, honestly, with Crimal in the hand, Leonis is okay with this. He'll fight them all. <laughs> Actually, first, uh, I'll have that on my turn. So, so why is the attack so high? Oh, right, right, right. Because they're doing their, their nonsense there. Um, so that's, that should be so that should be five lower. But that that's doesn't so. really... Yeah, that'll still hit your touch. So um, when it does, you feel like a surge of negative energy flow through you. And you can give me a fortitude save, please. Mm -hmm. For that one, you can roll again for triple that one, unless you want to use a fate point, or and then you can use a fate point if you desire to reroll that. Yeah, I'm gonna reroll that. Sure. It's not much better, but it's fine. Yeah. So you would fail that, um, and you take four con drain in addition to the negative energy damage. Okay. 
So the creature has flyby attacks, so essentially as soon as it attacks you, it flies into the ground, where you lose track of it for now. More of the creatures are advancing um, on all sides. I'm just going to try to go through those quickly as we move up on Dranik's turn here. So Dranik, do you want to go ahead and take your actions for the round? This is not a surprise round. You guys were relatively aware that something bad was going to happen here. All right. I'm completely oh. surprised. <laughs> I am going to anklet of translocation 10 feet away. Okay. <clears throat> and then... With my mind sight, do I detect any minds in these guys? Um, that's a great question, actually. So <clears throat> you would begin to realize that um, there's an effect you've probably never seen before, where the creatures like naturally are mindless, but together here they're behaving like a hive mind. So you will see the same mind in multiple locations throughout all these creatures, essentially. Um, the type is plant. And the, <clears throat> sorry, the intelligence score, since you also get that, right? Yes. So I think the way I should phrase this is that the mind is moving between creatures constantly, so it's not like uh, they all possess this at the same time. But, um... oh, it's only 18. Okay, well, 18. So here and there, you'll see, like, fairly, like, advanced intelligent thinking, but uh, mostly it's just nothing, like, totally mindless. All right. Uh... I am going to cast greater invisibility on myself than moved. Okay. <clears throat> and that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. Next round you get haste, but I needed to get closer. All right, can Aerodapper give me a perception check as well? All right, Aerodapper does see this one approach as well, and this one will take a swipe at him. Oh, that one. So it attempts to swipe at him as well, it will miss, and it too will pass under the earth and take d4 points of damage yes sorry from your um oh, by the way your light or how does it function exactly um within 10 feet of me you take d4 points of damage um i believe we ruled that it was a uh a lantern of some kind that gave 15 feet of light and 30 feet of faint light Right, that's what I had it set to before before I enabled the dark vision on your token. So Yeah, the light everyone else should still be able to see the light from me, but then in addition to that I can see in the dark. Yeah. Um under the legacy lighting it's harder to do that, but yeah, I've got it set up for dark vision right now. Under okay, Oh you're doing leg okay, light. legacy's different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> do you um have it uh it's but it's not like daylight or anything like that, right? Uh, no, it's just like a, it's not as good as a torch. I forget what it is. It's like a lamp, but not a lantern. Like it, it's some stupid in-between thing. Like a candle does five feet, a lamp does 15 feet, and a torch does 20 feet. Okay. And then obviously each of them is double for the faint light. Okay. I generally only turn my Holy Radiance off 
if it's going to be a problem, like if menu standing beside me. Right. Well, you would have seen the um, the wraith like creature attempt to move away from the, or like it would have uh, shirked at the light, but otherwise continued. Okay. Um, he's gonna have some problems with that. Okay, I applied the auto damage to it already, but let's move to Asher Ball. <clears throat> yeah, fine. Um, thinking of cast of using a buff spell that will increase our attack rolls against a specific type of creature. Do we know what type of creature these things are yet? Um, you don't actually. You could make a knowledge check to try to discern it. Sure. What type of knowledge would be appropriate in this instance? Well, that's up to you to decide. Right? So you could do one knowledge check as a free, another one as a swift, another one as a move, etc. Okay. Well, they seem to have intelligence, so I've been guessing that they're not natural creatures. So I'm going to go for knowledge lore, I guess, or this is basically arcana. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want to use a fate point on that reroll or on that roll or? Sure, why not? I'll use a fate point and reroll it. And I got in that one. Yay. Do I roll for a triple that one? Um, no, because this was a reroll. Um, okay. So I spent the fate point and I got worse. Nice. You should see Lake. He's used almost every fate point and gotten worse roll in my games. Yeah. It's fine. I'll get more. It's been a while since I've been using fate points. Um. <clears throat> So, yeah, so I guess you're, with this check, you feel like it's possible that these things were created by magic, but you don't believe it's necessarily, like, necromancy. Like, you, you don't see any, like, signs of necromancy or anything. It's notable that none of them are making a sound. They're all just kind of, like, silently moving towards you, um, which seems to be the biggest tell so far. So you you don't believe this is the right knowledge to identify these creatures. Like, they're not like a construct or dragon or anything else that's, you know, being a pure magic. I said, and you said that you, I don't think that they were made by necromancy? <clears throat> you doubt that based on the signs that you're seeing? I mean, they certainly look like zombies approaching you and such, but. Uh... Interesting. Well, wouldn't necromancy be a different construct to begin with? It would be. Well, I mean, here in Knowledge Arcana, it tells you about spells that could be cast with magic, like necromancy. So you, you know a little bit there, but not a ton. So um, mm -hmm. Knowledge Religion is the more applicable one for identifying undead anyway. Um, but yeah. By others. I guess I could try Knowledge yeah. Nature, which in my case would be the MVS Survival. Um, this would be a swift action, right? Um, yes, yeah, so this would be a swift action to do it on if you want. So that'll be a 30, since I kind of this these up. <clears throat> okay. So let's hear. So knowledge nature is thirty total. So um looking a bit more closely at the creatures here, 
you realize that uh, <clears throat> there's a lot more of that fungus and mold growing on them. Um, and in, additionally, that uh, their bodies are moving in such a weird and unnatural way, but a way that would be natural if the bodies were being essentially puppeteered around. Um, like with a bit more examination, like looking a bit more closely, you realize that these are animated by essentially vines and <clears throat> plant like muscles that are moving this, these undead bodies around or these dead bodies around. So they're using the bodies as a disguise or a cover, but that they, you believe they're actually plants. Interesting. So these are all plants then? Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and channel... What do you guys think is better? AC attacks or saves? For save. what? Against plants. I would say saves just because of what happened to Dranic and possibly Aradeva. Okay. I don't think anything happened to Aradeva. Hours, I think. Anthony got hit. I could give, like, if you want, I can sort of split it between AC attacks and saves up to plus five, I believe. Up to you. If you guys want. I'll just give you guys a plus five insight. It's an insight bonus, by the way, if that matters. Cool. Okay, well, hearing nothing, I will just give everybody a plus five insight bonus by channeling knowledge. For croissants. I'll link the ability in the Discord. What? Can you be putting it in Discord? Yeah. Plus five to what you said? Plus five inside bonus against to saves against the abilities used by the creatures of the designated type. Of course, tables don't really translate very well in Discord. But, yeah, whatever. I'm not in range of that. Yeah, you wouldn't be in range, would you? I guess I could move first. I didn't use the move action. Are no, you're in range. Aerodavar's turn. 